Hello, I would like to show you today the new possible things what you can do with the iTouch Flex. And the iTouch Flex has a web server included and we can put some web pages on it. And I will show you today how this works. Well, at the beginning we have the Global Cache website and here on the support part we can download some of the softwares which we need to do that. First of all, we need the iHelp utility to find the devices and later we need the iLearn tool to uh, learn infrared codes. I have already downloaded these files and put them here on my machine. So first I start up iHelp. The Global Cache iFlex is already connected so we just wait until the device is found. It's sending out a broadcast every 30 seconds or maybe every minute or something like that. So you can see here we have to flex and find some other devices but this is the IP address we would like to connect. So our first step is we go to the web page and open the, this IP address. So let's go here and start a new tab say 216.8.1.1.6.9 then the configuration interface of the Global Cache iTAG Flex opens. It takes a little time because it's loading the graphics and stuff. So what we can do here is first change the network setting if needed. Here we have the name, we can enable or disable DHCP. Uh, if we disable it we can change all the network parameters but in this case we don't want to do that. Um, next step is the flex link port configuration. Here I need to specify if I using a single ER emitter, a tripod cable or serial cable. In this case I said uh, the blaster to true because I have connected a blaster. Save the changes. We can check the firmware version here if needed, but that's pretty fine so far. Um, okay. What we are doing next is to read the ER code. For reading the ER code, we open the iLearn utility. It's this one here. And we switch this to iTag Flex Learner. And we need to fill in our IP address here and say connect. It now says it's connected. You can see here, this is the iTag Flex. This is a DVD player. I close the door here for a second and I have a remote here and what I do now is I will learn the open command on the global cache box it is a there is a hole on the top then I just put it on the table and say open and then you can see that the learning utility has learned the code so this is the code which we need um, the next step, what we are doing, I have already prepared a small web page. Um, it is in the same design like the uh, like the web page which comes from Global Cache. It's looking like that. It's called DVD HTML. It's a little bit um, jQuery in it. It's a little bit uh, CSS files, but you can also use a very simple code if you like. It's just to make it look a little bit nicer. And the main point which we need to have a look on is this function here because this function is for sending out infrared codes. Uh, the documentation how this is done and which commands are available are in a document which is available on the Global Cache web page. Maybe I show you this for a second. Um, here on the web page on the right side you can see documentation. We have the HTTP API or the TCP API, in this case it's the HTTP API. I have already downloaded this file, so it's this one here. And there you can see it's the ER command transmission. It's uh, Here's everything described, including the header which you need to send to the device. And there is also the same thing available for the serial commands. So the next step is we need to fill in our uh, infrared code which we have just learned into this field. So first we need the frequency which we can grab from here.
frequency is the first one here, it's 38004. So we go here, 38004. Preamble can be empty, and ER code will be the second line here, this one. So we say here, copy. And copying is not directly working, that's why I'm doing this step in between. So we copy this part, say copy, and put this then here in the infrared part between the two quotation marks. And here we say paste. So this is my infrared code, and the infrared code must be repeated one time. So I put one here. Then I save this file. By the way, this function irsynth eject is called by a button which is here just button and I say on click this one here irsynth eject this is all which I need to do to make this function to work okay but at the moment uh, this file is on my local PC and I need to upload it to the global cache box and this is the big magic because it is not that easy to read it from the description how to do that but I have prepared everything for you so you will have a link here and then you can upload it very quickly we are doing that now with uh, this prepared structure my file is here it's the DVD file there are some other files the jQueries and stuff by the way jQuery is also needed to do that and we are now just uploading it therefore we use this batch file just started and it asks now for the IP address of the box so we have the IP address here so we just fill that in 192.168.1.196 so now Everything what needs to be done, compressing files, uploading files, erasing file system, all this is done automatically. You just have to wait here. It just takes a little time. and you can design your web page as you like there is not a big no big limitations on it the only limitation which we have currently is it's not possible to create folders on the global cache flags this is something which maybe is added later um, but at the moment it's not available um, for uploading we are using a file called C URL and, but you can all get this in the batch file, which we will prepare for you. Okay, now it's done. Just close this window. And if we get this message, it says, oh, it's not formatted properly because we are uploading files. So just say no. Otherwise, you get the original files from, the I, from Global Cache back on the system, and we don't want that. So next step is use the browser used the flex and our file was not the index but it was the dvd dot HD <coughs> HDM so it's opening the graphic need a little bit time I have not included the preloader so just wait well that's it there's the open button and if I press the open button you can see here on the webcam what will happen you can see the display changes and it opens again and press the button again and it closes so it's pretty simple to do a single one-ray remote control system with the global cache boxes I hope you will find some time to do something with it because it's pretty cool well see you next time